film deals with some very heavy subject matter um, and you know some wounds that are still very raw but while it's very clear-eyed about evil it never lets the darkness overcome what I think is the dominant theme of mercy um, what was the film about for each of you well I think the word mercy was pretty interesting that you just used the idea that it's such a big film I mean, it's so hard to sum up in, in, in one answer for me. I think it's just so many layers and so much going on in it. But the idea of the ultimate, the, at the end, the journey that um, Father James Lavelle goes on, um, and the idea of compassion and forgiveness, for me, is, is what this film, why it resonates for me. Yeah, I'd go along with that and, and, and hope and not giving in to the temptation to despair, you know, and I think despair is given its shot too, you know, we're given a lot of reason. And there are a lot of accusations, you know, there's a feeling of treachery by the authorities, whether it's, you know, the political or the economic or the religious, and uh, there's a feeling of betrayal and uh, disillusionment. And uh, a good man is trying to hold up and say, yeah, but life's still worth living and there is hope for us yet, you know, and that's kind of a pretty heroic thing to do, I guess, in these times. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, you know, the, the, the character of Father James talks about, there's so much talk about sin, but not enough about virtue, and I really think he is a virtuous man. Um, he's one of the more interesting portrayals that I've seen of a priest on screen. Um, and while he's not perfect, he has his flaws, he has his doubts. Um, he's also a man of profound faith. He's a wounded healer, almost like a Graham Greene character. Yeah. Um, can you talk to how you prepared for the role? Um, well, I was kind of a party to it from the very beginning. We told myself and John, Mike, John Michael McDonough talked about the notion of a good priest at the present time when the stature of priests had changed utterly uh, and had flipped, particularly in Ireland, where they were deified almost and then were vilified to a degree that was disturbing and how it must be to kind of deal with that. So from the beginning, it was a quest for, you know, I knew his context and, I, and then the idea of making him a flawed man, as you say, uh, gave massive kind of breath to it when, you know, the backstory happened about that he had been married, he had a daughter, Fiona, who Kelly plays beautifully, and that she has become fragile. Um, so that he was a much more rounded man than a naive, you know, seminarian. And uh, so the soul of him began to become very complex, and he was a kind of an everyman in, in, in a lot of ways, you know, so that it wasn't just about coming from one particular angle. So the character emerged slowly, and when Kelly arrived on set then, it, it, uh, he became complete, I think, because... Uh, the pain of that particular aspect of his life was so completely clear. Um, Fiona really straddles the, the hope and despair that's alluded to in the opening quote from St. Augustine. Um, and all the other characters in the flock kind of sort of fall somewhere between those two polars. Um, can you talk a little bit about how you approach that role? I, um, I really wanted her to be um, her, her father's daughter. You know, I really wanted this relationship there to be an unspoken, um, real sort of connection between them that had been fractured. That you that that, that they ha they think similarly. They have a, a same sort of even though she doesn't share his religious beliefs and she challenges him and she questions him. I wanted her to be the daughter of the the human being, the man, not not the priest, the father. I wanted I wanted her to. Um, to, to, to be someone available for that story. And so all I wanted her to do was come and be like, I just want my dad. I just want you. And the end scene, it wraps it up so nicely. I don't want to give anything away, but it, it says so much without saying a word. Yes, well, John does that. John Michael McDonough, mm -hmm. our director, writer, he, he really does beautiful um, cinematography as well. That's just, the, the images conjure up so much. In a, in a frame without Yeah, a we've word. grown to know them very well, haven't we? You know, one of the things that Kelly brought as well was, you know, the idea that they shared things that, so that the love that was there, whatever about the pain, the love was kind of, right. was particularly, and we did a lot by having a similar sense of humour. Yes. Um, and so we, so we could kid, kid each other, and John writes pretty scintillating dialogue in that right. regard, you know, so, so there was a way that we could get re really far very quickly, you know, in terms of the, the characters and getting to know them. Was, the, was it originally scripted with that ambiguity at the end, or was that a decision later on to sort of leave it open to interpretation about what happens in that end scene? 
Oh, it's open. It's open. I yeah. Mm, yeah. I mean, I, it's pretty clear to me what it is. Yes. <laughs> but, <laughs> but he didn't spell it out he what it was. It. And that's what's beautiful when you Absolutely. get a screenplay where it doesn't dot all the I's and, you know, it doesn't explain it. It believes in itself and allows you to discover it. Well, in a summer of superheroes, it's fun to have a film that actually deals with such uh, wonderful issues. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you.